This is a gentleman that I've uh, listened to and worked with a couple of times. Um, I've listened to you for how many years you've been on the air here? Actually, I started full time in 09. It was wow. my first radio gig, and I've been at KTAR now just a little over a year. That's unbelievable. Tell people, I know uh, Mr. Mike Broomhead from the Mike Broomhead Show, KTAR, uh -huh. the flagship. When people that know radio think Arizona radio, it's, it really is a great radio station, 100,000 watt FM station, great news team, a full newsroom, reporters on the streets. Um, I, have the, I have the best tools. It's like being a chef in a five-star restaurant. You really have the best of everybody around you. They're fantastic. Wow. Now, let's take you back to Fort Myers, Florida, is when you were growing up. And okay. You, and you always make fun of yourself, so I'm not going anywhere I should. Okay. You were a student. Probably not in your top 12, like we were talking about. No, I was not. <laughs> Bottom 12. Bottom 12. And, and, and I'm not speaking out of turn here. Mike's always his harshest critic. If somebody would have told you, you're going to live in the desert, working at KTAR, you're going to be a highly rated, well-renowned radio host, would you have believed it? No, um, I grew up single mom. You know, my parents divorced when I was 12, oldest of three boys. Um, my mom was my hero uh, as I got older. I never realized how difficult it was for her until I started to try to take care of myself and got older. But we were spectacularly average. Um, I, um, I'm the oldest of three boys, barely graduated from high school, working since I was 12 in restaurants, got a job as an electro electrical apprentice, and excelled in the trades. But I never imagined I would ever do anything other than be working class, which we all still are. My, my middle brother, Tom, went into the military, and then my youngest brother was the first one in our family ever to graduate from college, and he's a cop in my hometown. And I thought that was going to be the epitome of success, was graduating from college, and him. Yeah. So this is crazy. That is awesome. Well, how did it happen? You don't just wake up one day on your way to your electrical gig yeah. and stumble into a radio station. No, but it actually, I stumbled into it. And the, it started out in tragedy. I, I know you know the story. My middle brother, Tom, went uh, in 1990, joined the Marine Corps from 90 to 94. He was with the Marines, moved to Arizona, and went to work out at the Florence prison. And he was out there for a while, re-enlisted in the army in 2000, and was part of the invasion, or just behind the invasion into Iraq in March of 03. He was killed in combat on Memorial Day of 03. Wow. And so being the oldest brother, I was kind of the family spokesman. And I never re really thought that I had a gift for any kind of public speaking, but I was passionate about my brother and his service and began to speak out um, pro-troops, pro-troop rallies, um, got asked to be a volunteer on the Bush campaign in 04 and started, they had me travel in the country. I found my, I was at the president's ranch. I was like Forrest Gump. I was on the, uh, <laughs> I was at the Capitol Mall doing a speech and you're standing there thinking, what am I doing here looking at the Lincoln Memorial? And it kind of spun guest appearances on Fox News and on CNN and um, but it was one topic. So I never imagined it would blossom in anything else. And somebody actually put me in a radio studio and said, man, you're good at this. Do you want to try it? And that's how it started. And I did it for free for six months. And then for a few years, I was a fill-in host. And I got a full-time opportunity in 09. Wow, that's amazing. It, it's, it's shocking to, to me. Well, and you know what? There's a great story. I mean, that's a great story. And that's a great lesson to learn. Life comes at you in weird ways. Oh, yeah. And I'm, it's like me. I used to sell real estate. One day I was in a nightclub and an open mic started and I told a couple of jokes and, and, and now, now look. You know. you know, it's funny because when we worked together at that event, it was a patriotic event for a group called Friends of Freedom, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I did, I had never seen you perform before and I was the MC that night and you brought the house down. I mean, you were one of the funniest guys I've ever seen and I wondered why I hadn't heard of you. I wonder that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's because not enough people watch Mesa Morning Live, darn it. Tell everybody. Yeah. But, uh, wow, what, what a great story. Now, I know you haven't always been with KTAR. I don't know if you want to tell a little yeah, backstory. I started with, I started with a, a radio station called KFYI, which is a pretty well-known flagship station, but an AM station. And they really were very good to me because I, I knew nothing. About, I literally knew nothing about radio. And uh, they, would, they would say radio terms to me about what I had to do with the microphone and when the brakes were a floating break and a hard break. <laughs> and I had no idea what that was. And so they literally held my hand to start out with until I had an opportunity. So it was a great opportunity for me, but um, such a big, diverse audience at KTAR. It's just yeah. a different place, and it's just been the best thing that I've ever done. Now, do you guys take, I know the answer to this, but you take 
questions from callers. We do. What, what we've done more of is, on, is we do it more in social media. So I interact with people on Twitter, interact with people on Facebook and, and Instagram. But we've opened up something called the open mic line, a little play on words, and allow people to leave messages. And we play those back on the air. And it gives people the freedom to kind of express themselves. And it's not a back and forth. But there's a lot of great information from people that are no more than I do on a topic. I'm opinionated, and they're experts. So we do that. Well, and I think I know where this is going to fall, but what are the topics that everybody's talking about right now? You know, it's been, it's all been about COVID. I actually started at, at KTAR and three weeks later was the shutdown. So I've got coworkers I've never met. So I've been in that <laughs> same boat, yeah. but people working from home, how are we going to get through COVID? I heard you talk earlier about turning the corner that we're all praying that we have, getting the vaccine. Should we, shouldn't we get the vaccine? Which I did. I just got my second dose. Um, and I think the togetherness of the fear, remembering that fear of dine-in was gone and what are we doing what's going to happen that was been number one uh the immigration issues become bigger right now um because we're a border state the economy always is, a, is always a big thing for me here in arizona the growth we've had in industry um for the first time having more jobs in the manufacturing world than in the construction world where i came from I, i've watched arizona change and that's a big part of the topics too that we talk about well that's amazing you've actually left Florida, which is now, there's so many people moving to Florida right. and moving to Arizona, you, you couldn't hardly get two more diverse states. And I've, we've got family in Florida, we go all yeah. the time, but I mean, you've got the, the weather in Florida is great, you've got the ocean and everything. I think the weather's better here. We've got the mountains and all the sure. skiing and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, you see uh, so many people moving here and that all requires growth. And I mean, Mesa is just, Mesa's turned out to the hotbed yeah. of technology. I remember I moved here. I came here for the first time in 92 on vacation, and I fell in love with Arizona. I had an opportunity to move here in February of 95. So I've been here 26 years, and I've been an elect I was an electrician, a service electrician in a van. I remember driving in Mesa when it was um, cotton fields and, and, and feedlots, and you, the further east you went, it was just these little tiny towns. It's remarkable to drive through downtown Mesa and see how beautiful it is, and to go anywhere in this town and see how much it's grown. It's incredible. Well, you know, I come down here once a month, and it's it's it changes regularly. I mean, it's just the growth, and you see cranes, and you see, you know, there's how many how many colleges and universities do we have here now? There's just like, well, you and I wouldn't know. No, exactly. <laughs> I, bartender college. I was valedictorian <laughs> at bartender college, class of July. <laughs> um, but no, it's uh, Mesa's just booming, and there's so many. It's a magnet. There's so many people moving here. But it's still. Uh, no matter where you go, you see it still feels like a small town. It the does. people here, I, I try to explain to people after the, if you remember the big fight on immigration years ago, the SB 1070 fight. So in the world I live in, there's this big political fight. And I would say to people, it's not like that here. People are very independent on all sides of the political aisle, but they make room for other people's opinions. So there isn't this big fight here. It really is a community. Whenever some tragedy strikes, uh, when the Yarnell Hill fire happened. Oh. I live, was living in North Phoenix at the time, and we went out to the freeway overpass way up in North Phoenix near Carefree Highway. It was packed. Every overpass was packed with people and American flags when Senator McCain passed away. This community comes together at the right times, and that's what I love about it. It is a major city across the valley, but it's turned, it's still that small town. We still love each other. I, I, you know, I don't want to say that too much because we don't want to get too full too fast, but it's a great place to live. Oh, I always tell people on the, you know, when I'm on the road, I tell people it's miserable here. Yeah. Oh, we're almost out of water. <laughs> I say, if you come, bring a canteen. That's exactly water. right. Yeah, it's yeah. terrible. Oh, it's miserable. No yeah. food, no good food. Food's no, horrible. Hot. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, uh, scorpions everywhere. Yeah, in your everywhere. house. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to keep the traffic down. Yeah. It ain't working, Mike. I know it's not. Um, well, cool. Well, tell, yeah, I know you're a fan of Arizona. Tell us about um, if people aren't listening to you in the morning from 8 to noon. By the way, that's four hours. That's a, that's a long gig. You know, my mother tells the story to everybody that she spent the first three years of my life trying to teach me to talk and the rest of it trying to get me to shut up. And, and it hasn't worked yet. And no one in my family ever imagined I would get paid to speak. But I love it. It's just such a great, it's, I try to stay as local as I can because I love it here. And being local, it, you nationalize, and all the national stuff becomes local. 
but talking about the great people here, I'm a huge supporter of law enforcement. My younger brother's a law enforcement officer with the tragedy and this trial that's going on in Minnesota. Oh. And it's such a horrible thing to witness what happened to that man, to happen to George Floyd. But to be able to tell another side of the story with law enforcement and the people I know, um, and to talk about the great people that are here and how we've helped each other, the charitable organizations I've been able to be blessed to be a part of, that's the best part of what I get to do. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. I know you, um, you know, I jokingly say eight to noon every day is a long day. Yeah. But your day doesn't stop at noon. You do a lot of evening events. Yeah, I do a lot of stuff because I just think, you know, you, you know what it's like. Sooner or later, people are going to stop asking. Yeah. And so I try not to ever say no. And there are so many great organizations. We were talking about um, about uh, the United Food Bank. And recently I was went down there and toured the facility. It's such an amazing organization of humble people that are feeding hungry people all over the state of Arizona. And when you get to meet people like that to do that every day, that little bit that I do is nothing, and especially if I can shed light on that, the homeless problem and all the organizations that are working to help how bad it is to be homeless in Arizona in the middle of summer, those organizations. So anytime I can lend a voice or just be part of that, the little bit I do is nothing, but it, it, it's the best part of what I get to do. You know, it is amazing, and this has been, uh, to say this has been a weird year is an yeah. under understatement. But even through this economic turmoil that we're all still kind of fighting through, I'm speaking personally here, the, the amount of charitable contributions that people make, you know, everybody, I get really offended when I hear people talk about hating the USA. We're the most benevolent uh, group of people on the planet. Sure. And even when we don't have what we're used to having or expect to have, we share a lot. And yeah. I know you do that too. Yeah, I was just down recently, um, I was down at TASC, which is where that big homeless campus down in Phoenix. And I was down there with a group called Circle the City. A woman named Marty Hames took me around and showed me around. And they give out these packets to people, hygiene packets, and it includes a mask because of COVID. And for a long time, they have these rooms that the homeless people would go in to cool off. Well, they were closed because of COVID. You couldn't go inside. So you saw people laying in the shade. But the willingness for homeless people to want to share what they have with you. Yeah. And I think if somebody that's homeless wants to share something with you, that really describes more of who we are than anything else. And that's what I love about it is you're right. The, as, as afraid as people are, when there's a need, we were talking on the air with people that disagree with me politically one day, and I just I, cr I made a joke about donating uh, money to an organization. I think it was maybe St. Mary's Food Bank. And um, I had four or five people that, on Twitter, I don't agree with anything you say, but this is great. And they all donated 100 bucks yeah. in the middle of this pandemic. It's amazing to see how willing people are to give if they find the worthwhile cause. Yeah, and you talk about homeless, you know, uh, you watch the homeless folks sleeping on grates in the in the wintertime in New York City and stuff, and then you flip it, and you think about being homeless in Phoenix in the summer, right? and the amount of resources that we need, and, and I know Mesa does the water drive. I keep referring to my, yeah. my answer. Yeah. June 1st is the water drive. How many bottles of water, how many, uh, what's the? The, the real goal is 400,000, the extended is five. 500,000 bottles of water, and, and, and they'll do it, yeah. because people will step up and uh, do what it takes. To go and watch people in Phoenix and think about the need for shoes. Because imagine walking on the pavement in Phoenix or in the valley, I say Phoenix, but in the valley without shoes. And then when someone hears of that need to show up and see a bin full of shoes because people had extra shoes in their house that they'll drop them off. When people in this valley recognize the need, yep. they always want to find a way to fill it. And it's what I love about it. That's awesome. So. Uh... If I were to ask you, what, what's your crystal ball? What do you think, how do you think things are gonna, this is an unfair question because okay. nobody knows, but uh, what do you see happening with uh, politically or with COVID or? Wow, or, are I you mean, sure you want me to answer any of those questions? Yeah, we're, um, we're very. I think, I think what we are looking for, I've more than ever, we are looking for common ground. And so a solution to a problem that's not perfect for everyone is better than what we've been doing. So I think we're gonna be more solution oriented. As far as COVID goes, I think it's taught us all to work together. And it does seem like we've turned a corner. The numbers, I was looking at the numbers again, I follow them, I have notebooks full of the daily numbers. And we are in a much better place. Hospitalizations, um, ICU bed usage is all very, very low. There are still some cases, but as we vaccinate those younger people, that 20 to 44 year old age group that's in that demographic, when they get vaccinated, I think we're gonna see case numbers drop. 
and we're going to get back to some sense of normalcy. Is it going to be June? Is it going to be October? We don't know. But for the first time in a year, we all feel like it's going to end. We're not fearful anymore, and we're just anxious to get open again. And I think that consumer confidence is helping the economy. And I think when the economy is strong, I think the politics kind of goes by the wayside. And I'm hoping that's what happens. Well, the economy's rocking right now. The stock market was way up today. Everybody's enthusiastic. Well, and the numbers that they're talking about with uh, the jobless numbers are way down, which is perfect, in the service industries, which were so hammered, the hospitality industry. Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> you you can't work in front of crowds. You know, it, exactly. it, it's all those numbers are starting to go in the right direction and just hopefully that with all of that happening we're going to start regaining some confidence and in Arizona they're saying that they believe most people after the foreclosure um, at, or the um, moratoriums end that most people are going to be able to keep their homes they've been able to have home values high enough to renegotiate I think that builds a lot of confidence too because you don't want to see people on the street that are homeowners yeah so I think it's more good news than bad news and people are looking for that right now well, I know you're bullish on Arizona, as am I. Yeah. I, I think nobody appreciates Arizona as much as people that didn't grow up here. Right. But we come here and go, wow, it's just the most beautiful place. There are people watching this online from all around the country. Why should they move to Arizona? Oh. Um, we jokingly yeah, say we don't want them yeah. to. Um, I would say the diversity of, the, of what we have to offer. You can be in the desert in the wintertime in shorts and literally play golf, drive an hour and a half north and build a snowman with your kids and then come back down the hill. We have uh, entry-level housing, as much as the housing market's going crazy, but we have these beautiful Paradise Valley and mansions, and Mace, parts of Mesa and the East Valley are so beautiful. Golf courses, we have everything to offer indoors and outdoors for people. But most of all, I think it's the people. I, I, there's something about when you move here, there's just an independence of kind of self-reliance, but at the same time, your neighbor is always willing to pitch in. My next door neighbor grew up in the neighborhood I bought a house in recently, and they are just the nicest young couple. He cut my grass for me the other day. I didn't ask him to, I looked on my camera, <laughs> and I was at work, and I said, what's going on? My neighbor was cutting my lawn. That's the kind of people here. Well, it's either it either speaks to his character or your lack of landscape. Uh, yeah, he was probably sick of looking at my grass. <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, I appreciate you coming in, Mike. And uh, this guy's too modest to say this, but trust me, I'm. Uh, we kind of have similar friends in in different aspects of charitable work, and this guy's busy all the time volunteering for things, law enforcement, military. Yeah. Uh, they've got a friend of Mike Broomhead. Uh, he started off here. Uh, Electrician, uh, yeah, as an electrician. electrician. Yeah. Then you went to KFYI. Now yep. you're at KTIR. Yep. You, you've got the you got the lingo down. I see you as a future governor of Arizona. Oh, that just sent shockwaves through anybody <laughs> who really knows me. Um, I'm not running for political office because they do background checks. I know. Just like you're talking about. Oh, it'd be ugly, um, wouldn't it? When I talk about skeletons in my closet, pretty recent skeletons in my closet. <laughs> but I know I love it. I I feel like I could be more of an influence in what I do now. Yep. And there are so many other people that would be capable. Of, I've asked about been asked about running for office. There's too many other people that are good at it and capable of it. And I'm not joking. I just, I love what I do. I mean, who would want to give up my gig right now? Plus, you're right. You can do more by being on the air and, and interviewing those kind of people. Sure. That be great for, for Absolutely. Arizona. Anything else you'd like to share before I turn you loose? I don't, can't think what of it. What time do you go to bed at night if you get up super early? I'm horrible because I'm, I'm both a night owl and a morning person. So I get grumpy on Thursdays. This is the happiest I've been on a Thursday in a long time. <laughs> I go to bed at about 10 or 10.30, and I'm up at 5. Yeah. So, you know, I'm... I'm all right. So we got Mesa Morning Live, April. We got happy Mike Broomhead. I don't know what else you people want. This is, this is yeah. as good as it is. And this is as happy as I get, too, by the way. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming Thanks in and spending having some time with us. It's Come great back. to see you again. It really is great to see you it's again. When I heard long. that this was that you were going to be here, I really was thrilled because I had so much fun with you. Yeah, it was fun. And then we, you know, we were in the same world, but I haven't gotten to see you. So thank you. This has no. been a great. Well, come back. and Everybody on here today has been with us before. So you got to come back. Anytime you'll have. If they'll have me back, I'll come back. Yeah, you're always welcome. All right.